And then we performed a spaceship summoning ritual. Okay, great. Goodbye. Phew, I think I dodged a bullet. And I only gave him a little bit of information, so I don't think it will hurt Sean, right? What was that? Could it be that our ritual yesterday actually worked, and the messenger of the stars has arrived? I'm stumped. Let's skip the guessing game and examine the crash site instead. Look, there are stairs leading to it. Hang on. The stairs are as good as gone. We need to fix them. And we better remove the rock pile while we're at it. It's a safety hazard. I don't see any aliens here, or anything else for that matter. The fog is so thick, I hope it's not toxic. Yeah, this fog is definitely eerie. It's like something out of a horror movie. Don't worry, it's just steam from the geyser. It's safe, we can take care of it later. Right now, let's clear the area and try to reassemble whatever landed here. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Is it really a spaceship? But that's impossible. We have to ask Jane to run some tests on it. Austin, call the lab ASAP B. There's no need. There's a pretty good chance our spaceship is man-made. Check out what's trending on social media. No, he couldn't have possibly stooped so low. That's too much of a cheap trick even for him, or is it? I need to text him right now. I'll be back in a bit. Text who? We'll ask when she's back. We need to do something about the geyser. The debris has increased the pressure inside it. It's practically spewing steam. You're right. We need to clear it out immediately and replace these dilapidated stairs so no one trips here. just as I thought. Larry staged the UFO crash. Here's his text. Yeah, I wanted to give you a little nudge in your search for a scoop. Oh no, was he also the one who made the whole thing blow up online? I can't believe he dragged us into this. What will happen when the truth gets out? Well, I imagine both of your reputations will be ruined for good and Larry will keep coming up with more lies to boost the channel's ratings. I have no words. Larry has really outdone himself this time. The whole world is waiting to hear my hot take on lies. I have no idea what to do. We'll figure this out together. And work will help us clear our minds. Let's start with the geyser before it blasts us with steam. Let's build a couple reservoirs and add greenery. That'll take some pressure off the geyser. And there won't be any unpleasant surprises.
Austin, working really did clear my mind. I figured out a way to put Larry in his place and calm down any viewers who are freaking out about the UFO crash. We can say we were filming a video debunking the UFO landing, but we'd have to commit to it by actually making the video and posting it on my blog. You're suggesting replacing Larry's fake story with our own fake story about fakes? My head is spinning, but I love the idea, and I bet your viewers will too. It will also explain where the spaceship came from and reassure everyone that we're still all about science here. So let's get started. Before we do, let's set up some alien decor and make our UFO look picture perfect like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Yeah. I'm wiped out from painting the spaceship. I really complicated things when I... Well, I guess I have to come clean at some point. I got us into this whole UFO mess. I was constantly trying to impress Larry by embroidering the truth, and yesterday, I let slip about the ritual. And I guess he assumed you'd be willing to be part of his ruse, but if it hadn't been you, it would have been someone else. Larry is very cunning. Anyway, I'm really sorry I dragged you into all of this, and that I gave Larry unverified information. Apology accepted. Besides, we already have a plan for how to fix this. And if our video is good enough, we'll be able to convince people the UFO crash wasn't real. For that, we'll need more eye-catching decor. I'll create a colorful backdrop and use my gardening skills to make thematic topiaries. Hey guys, check out this crashed UFO beside me. But what if I tell you it could never actually fly? Let's get to the bottom of this together. Great job everyone. It looks like we hit the mark with the video. I'll post it on my blog and hopefully we'll bounce back from the mess Larry has made. I'm so tired of hearing his name, but I have exciting news. Remember the sorcerer from the Boiling Cliff? He was mentioned in the statue inscriptions. I just realized that the geyser is the Boiling Cliff, which means the sorcerer might have lived nearby and left something behind, like some of his stuff or writing. Great work, Sean. We need to clear the area ASAP. It looks like we've gotten another clue in the spaceship case. These ruins could have easily been the dwelling of the sorcerer who summoned the spaceship. If that's the case, he didn't choose a very good neighborhood to live in. Or maybe he was a homebody. This place is crawling with snakes. Everybody stay calm. We can easily fix the hissing issue by planting pelargonium. It'll keep the snakes at bay. And I'd add some spathophyllum here as well. It would be a great way to improve the air quality, especially after the recent UFO crash. Yeah. 
Ellen, what are we going to do about the show? I honestly don't feel like working with Wonders of the World anymore after the stunts Larry pulled. I get it. He's leading the show in the wrong direction. But maybe there's a way we could turn things around and restore the channel's good name. The viewers deserve to know the truth about the spaceship. And we're the only ones who can show it to them in an honest, scientific way. I say we keep filming. You're right. We'll use science to debunk Larry's lies. But first, let's restore this ancient structure. We need to find out who it belonged to. That's the spirit. I'm happy to see you this inspired. But don't forget to watch your step. At least until I make a path here. Ellen dear, have you not been fired in a while, or did you just get bored of working at Wonders of the World? I spent loads on that UFO, and you just ignored it. I'm not going to lie to our viewers. We're going to use science to explain all of our discoveries. Accept it, or there won't be a third episode. Well, Ellen. Fair enough. The show is now your responsibility, so do as you see fit. But please keep Matilda and me in the loop. Toodles. Wow. I can't believe Larry just backed down like that. And all it took was giving him an ultimatum. Our video must have gained some traction. It's just because he hates losing money. Well, we can finally focus on the mysterious dwelling now. Let's examine the artifacts we found under the ruins. Well, Sean, did you find out who used to live here? Did it belong to the sorcerer from the Boiling Cliff who summoned the spaceship? A closer look at our finds has revealed. This was his house. He kept his ritual tools here. I also found a mask with an inscription saying, he knows the secret. What secret? And is he talking about himself in the third person? Or is he referring to the mask? I'm confused beats me. All I know is that the mask was once displayed on a pedestal in the yard. Maybe putting it back where it belongs will help us solve the riddle. Sean, I feel like the mask is watching me. It's giving me the creeps. Don't worry, Ellen. The mask has no interest in you. It's looking at the rock behind you, and you just happen to be standing in the way. It looks like there are traces of an ancient mural or something here. So the mask must be looking at it, right? But what does that mean, Sean? The only way to find out is by restoring the mural. Austin, could you set up lighting here? This might take us until nightfall. Unbelievable. It's a solar system model. Sure, it's pretty rough, but not way off the mark. And the mask seems to be looking at Earth. Maybe we need to press it? It worked. We found a secret compartment in the rock. There's still no spaceship, but these scrolls are something, right? Sure, only the writing has faded over the centuries. 
we need to treat the scrolls with a fluorescent compound and illuminate them with a special device. I bet the value of these scrolls is astronomical, <laughs> judging by how proficient the Atari were at cosmology. A little too proficient, if you ask me. It's almost scary how good they were. I can't fathom what could have linked them to outer space. Sean, are you entertaining the possibility that someone could have helped them? Oh, I need to feel the solid ground of science under me. I'm off to order the device. We're all set to illuminate the scrolls. Let's find out what mystery the Atari sorcerer was hiding. Whatever it is, I hope it has nothing to do with aliens. Although the atmosphere here is a little unsettling right now. It's a dark, starry night. Austin, we need to stay calm. The scrolls are too fragile to be handled with unsteady hands. Well, let's unravel the secret already, in the name of science. So, the sorcerer wrote that the people are constantly calling to the stars, but the messengers no longer come. The spaceship visited them only once. So the ship really existed. And the aliens weren't just a metaphor. They actually visited this island. Sean, is this for real? I don't know about the aliens. Some of the grammatical structures are ambiguous, but the spaceship definitely existed, and it still does. It's in the pyramid. How is that possible? We looked inside the pyramid. There was only treasure in there. Maybe the sorcerer just didn't notice that the UFO flew off. The ship is in a secret chamber. You can only see it from the third place of power, which is on the beach to the east of the pyramid. It's too dark to go now. But we can head there first thing in the morning. Oh, it's going to be a historic day. But now, if you'll excuse me, I need to update Larry on our progress. <laughs>